Mining job hunt video. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters and in today's video we are going to collect jobs for the sponsors mining jobs to apply for page and those are all the jobs that we think you should be looking at once you've done the sponsors DIY or work ready packages. So apologies for not um, posting a job hunt video last week the good old autoimmune disease caught up with me so it knocked me off my feet for a couple of days but um, I posted up the jobs that I could find online so you could still look at them there but let's get stuck into today's video so most people will have seen that um, or not most people nobody will have seen the gold price go up to a new high I've done a video about it so I will edit that and put that up shortly but yeah there's a lot of um, activity in the gold sector or there will be a lot of activity in the gold sector moving forward with the new high price so that's where you'll see a lot of these jobs popping up from it will be gold mines experience trades underground entry level surface Perth Grab that. Underground. Tasmania. So there's a lot of jobs all over the country, guys. Which is, as you can see, with the Tasmanian job, base fill. Base fill. So there's not quite as many jobs around this week as there normally are. There's still a few, but not quite as many. But as we go through, you'll see all the senior crew jobs, like they're looking for an all-rounder, so that'll be charge up or better. And the point that I just want to make is that, you know, experience charge up again. There's pace crew. Oh, I think we've already loaded that job up. It's a double up. But yeah, there's a lot of senior crew that people are looking for that they just aren't going to be able to replace them. There's just not the extras around. So if someone steals them from another mine site, then they're going to have to find somebody for themselves. So mucker, that's a bogger. So Glencore's trying to use the US terms for um, underground mining. Don't know why, but yeah, that's an underground bogger. But yeah, charge up and bogger there. You know, fitters. Jumbo operators. They're just... You know, you can't, it's not like there's extra people on the sidelines looking for this work. There's only a few limited experienced people running around that can do these jobs, that want to do these jobs. There are retired people that could come back, I suppose, but a lot of them are out of the industry for the reason. But you're not going to pick up a charge up, they're going to have to steal a charge up person from another site, and then the other site is going to have to try and steal another one, or at some stage, somewhere in the train, the point that I'm trying to get at is that they're going to have to promote somebody from underneath. And when they promote that person, wherever it is, that opens up an entry level job as a truck or a nipper or an offsider underneath it. So all these jobs that we're cruising through to day that are senior jobs as they get hired and people move on eventually somewhere around the country on one of the mine sites there's not going to be another experienced person to hire so that mine's going to have to train somebody now you know a lot of these um, jobs with barminko and all that sort of stuff they're not going to probably find somebody that's got that experience that's willing to jump in straight away so they're going to have to train somebody and that's why you know they have a lot of entry-level job ads up but it's just all about you know understanding how it all works and that those senior jobs that you see everywhere, there's not a bunch of experienced people around actually able to jump into those roles. So as we move through, just remember that all these senior jobs that you're looking for, all these senior jobs that you're looking for, like the cable bolt operator and the leading hand and all that sort of stuff, they're going to have to promote somebody if they can't find somebody and bring them in and that's going to open up a spot underneath for an entry level person so look long haul
surveyors. Twin boom jumbo operator with Aries. All those jobs, if they poach somebody, people will have to get promoted and it creates an entry-level job at the bottom. So when you look at all these senior crew jobs, you should be looking at them as good news. So as in that they eventually someone somewhere is going to have to hire entry-level people. Because you can only go for so long without running... You, um, you have to have people in those roles. So you can only operate it for so long looking for those people. And you've just got to jump in and go. So if people are looking for a mill job, then I suggest Cobar is probably one of the best places to go to have a look at that. Because this job, if you have a look through the job hunt videos, has been up often. So they're obviously looking for people there and having to put them through. These are the overseas jobs that I talk about that you can have a look at. They're looking for um, people to go to South Africa. That'll be fly and fly out. It's a greater job underground. So just if you've got greater experience, then my suggestion is hook yourself up with the sponsors DIY or work ready packages. Teach yourself how the mine works, and that'll give you a really good opportunity to transfer your greater skills onto a mine site, especially underground. So here we go with Barminko. This is their entry-level mining job again. And as you can see, it's the same campaign that they have been running for the last 10 weeks probably now. And so they, they, they've posted a lot of jobs and often, so they're looking for people. And all these companies... What gets you over the line with them as a new starter is when you can actually talk to them about what's going on in their mind. So if you know what's happening, if you can talk to them about what the nipper does, what the jumbo does, all that sort of stuff, what the um, truck, you know, all the jobs that you're going to be expected to do, that's what floats their boat. Because if you know how the mine works, then they can throw you in the deep end. And when they can throw you in the deep end, that's what they want because they get a productive member of crew in two or three weeks or three or four weeks instead of two or three months. So they, it doesn't take long to teach you how to drive the truck or do any of the practical side of these jobs. What takes all the time is teaching you enough about how the mine works so they can leave you alone in the truck to drive the truck by yourself or get on with the job whatever you're doing by yourself. And that's what everybody struggles with. And so if you can already pitch up knowing how it all works, then you've got a huge advantage over everybody else going for the jobs and you've, you've also got something to offer the employers. Ground control technician, what's this? Okay, so that looks like an entry level role because as it says down here with a lot of things, uh, uh, underground mining highly advantageous so when they say stuff like that they probably know that they're not going to get an experienced person they're probably going to get somebody that they're going to have to train up it's like when they say highly um, advantageous or it's preferred you'll see a lot of preferred stuff going on but we've um, already talked about that in other job hunt videos Pace fill opportunity, that's a good opportunity. This one's going to be a short video today, guys. When the underground jobs run out, I'm probably going to call it quits because um, I've got other stuff I've got to jump onto today. All round. Uh we'll still have a look at the prices and where the jobs are around the country. That's fine. But the point that I just wanted to make today with this video is that senior jobs that come up, just understand that that means that there's going to be an entry-level job created underneath it somewhere within the industry because there's just not the experienced people sitting on the sidelines to jump in. All right, let's have a look at one more.
Diamond Drill Supervisor Operator. Oh, surface Mine Site Positions. Mount Isa. I'll put that one down. Lots of people will like that. So if you are looking for something on the surface, then um, the best place I reckon to go is one of the big mining towns like Kalgoorlie or Mount Isa because they're still paying their surface operators reasonable amounts of money, or the trainees. Unfortunately, with coal and iron ore, the wages have really plummeted because, you know, they're, they're both, in, both sides of the industry have got a huge... Um, the push on to reduce wages that's why they're automating in iron ore and coal but that's why they do the trainee ships especially in coal that go for 12 months that you're on two and one you make 75 grand a year and that just works out to be about 25 bucks an hour so it's just all about cheap labor drills off siders that's a bit on the surface No, the drills off siders on the surface. I've picked some of these ones up because that I don't normally pick up that are always up, like these the true resources, but they're really desperate for people at the moment. So if you want to weigh in, it's a good way in, but I'd still educate myself before I went because, um, yeah, knowledge is power. And the more you know about how it all works, the better off you're going to be. Oh, no, okay, so that'll be a dipper roll. So you'll be dipping the holes. Oh, okay, that's interesting. All right, we'll take that. So that's a surface one for people that are looking. Geologist. All right, we'll have a look at one more. Diamond drill fitter, grader operator, burn cut. All right, so let's have a look at our map. So um, this is the map of the country where all the mines are. So this is loaded up for the gold and all the base metal mines that are producing uh, metals for the batteries that are going around the world. So as you can see, there's lots of jobs all over the country. Um, if you're in New South Wales, you've got a lot in the centre here around Orange Parks Dubbo. If you're in Queensland, you can drive down to those. If you're in Victoria, you can drive up to them. You know, obviously you can drive in and out of anywhere in, in New South Wales, like the Sydney area. Up in Queensland here, you've got a lot of stuff that's flying fly out around Man Isa and Charters Towers. So that is in and out of Townsville and Brisbane, or you can drive in and drive out depending on where you are. There's not that much going on in Victoria. There is a lot going on in Tasmania though. Um, there's a lot of base metal mines and a few gold mines ramping up in Tasmania. They're taking the old mothball mines and um, bringing them back online. So they're um, taking them out of care and maintenance. So, and also you've got your big mines in um, South Australia that are always looking and you've got your um, fly and fly out mines out of Perth which there are bucket loads of um, employers looking for those and you've got everything around Kalgoorlie and like I tell people because the gold price is so high and it's 29.70 an ounce Australian and um, yeah it's huge 
Kalgoorlie is one of the best places to go because there's a lot of gold mining around there and there's a lot of pits that they'll be opening up and they'll be um, turning them underground or they'll be taking another layer off the top because it's profitable. But yeah, they'll be, there'll be a quick turnaround mines around Kalgoorlie. So they'll be all looking to staff up. They'll be looking for people. So that's one of the best places to go. But make sure you educate yourself before you go. You can have a read in um, the latest blog that I wrote about big money mining careers that most people don't know about. I'm talking about the underground career path that you can do. Um, a lot of people don't realise that that exists. But that's the way you go, that I'd go at the moment with everything that's going on with around the world with the prices and all that sort of stuff. Coal seems to remain around the same price, uh, around that $130 um, an ounce, uh, dollar a tonne mark in US dollars. So that makes it just around the $200 Australian mark. And at that price, most mines are profitable. But if it drops much further below that, then some of these mines are going to get iffy, unfortunately. And that's the thing that you've got to look out for with coal is that, you know, eventually everybody's trying to close down these coal mines. They're not trying to close down the gold mines and the base metal mines. So if you've got a choice of where you're going to go, I definitely go into the hard rock underground or surface uh, gold and um, base metal mines I wouldn't I'd be avoiding the iron ore because the iron ore is all going driverless and I'd be you know coal with the price you know it's a bit hit and miss you know if you do get yourself a traineeship on a coal mine then you know if your coal mine shuts down in 12 months time what do you do after that that's the issue whereas if you go gold mining or you go into the base metals those mines are going to be going you know hell for leather for a very long time and i'm going to do a video i've done a video about the gold price i'm going to do another video later on about the prime minister's trip to india and that was really about the indians securing um the base metals that they need for the batteries because they've got quite an advanced uh climate change policy with um how they're structuring their energy in the industry so they're you they're taking all forms of energy so they are still doing coal and the fossil some fossil fuels they're also going nuclear but a lot of their um, plan is to replace a lot of vehicles in their major cities like the tuk-tuks and I've already done a story on that um, you can have a look back through the videos for that one uh, um, you're replacing them um, with electric tuk-tuks and they need the metals out of the ground to do that and so the Prime Minister's trip with um, the uh, to see Modi and everybody else over there with the business leaders if you go through all the news articles one of the first things that the Indians want to talk about whenever they're talking about the business is securing those metals so they can make those batteries so that's why I'd be going in that direction because you're going to have a long career in that direction everywhere else you know iron ore's driverless and they're trying to screw the wages down if you get a traineeship in iron ore I mean you'd be lucky to make 80 grand a year and I'd be very surprised once you're fully trained and been doing it for a while that you'll make anything above 100 120 thousand because the whole point of it even though they say it's you know about safety it's not really about safety it's about reducing wages and um, reducing the amount of staff that they've got so they can bring that wage bill down and yeah that's that's what the automation in iron ore is all about and so why would they pay people that they're bringing on right now huge wages when they're trying to bring everybody else's wages just down it just doesn't make sense so that's why you know with these new positions they're opening up um, with the automation I'd be very surprised if you're ever going to make more than 100 to 120 thousand with those jobs whereas with the hard rock underground you can read all about it in the blog but there's no reason in 10 years time that you couldn't be working somewhere overseas and we already had a look at some of these overseas jobs in the um, in the the jobs that came through today making you know anywhere from 25 to 40 grand a month and that's where the serious money is and the whole point of going into mining I reckon is to make a bucket a load of money so you can retire and you know have a sweet life after that and you know if you're only just making normal wages what's the point of being in mining that's my view on it anyway I know people's views will differ but anyway that's the way I, I see it so if I was going to get in I'd want to make the most money possible so anyway, I hope that information helps and that job hunt video shows you, points you in the direction. As always, if you've got any questions, please send them through and if you could like and subscribe the channel. Thanks.